哎，大家好，呃，我叫呃李希，我只是想跟大家大概稍微介绍一下我们的这个地图团队的一个计划，啊、呃，大家基本上也都看到了，在屏幕上，基本上呢，我们想找十个志愿者，然后呢，希望呢能够就是你们啊、呃，如果是对地图很有兴趣，然后呢，地图 API 的应用有一定的经验，那 API 呢，这是一个比较广义的 API， 包括 Maps API， 包括 Maplet， 还有包括这个今天。啊，我们还有这个要要讲的这个主题，这个 editing map API， 所以各方面 API 如果你都用过的话呢，啊，我欢迎大家呢能够啊报名，我们这里呢这个郑波，他是我们的工程师，啊，他会呢，如果你有兴趣的话，你跟你跟你跟他招个手，他手里有一个报名表。那我们希望通过的这个这个形式呢，能够跟大家一起互动，一个呢就是了解，就是你们作为业界也好，或者是你们自己。平时在写应用的时候的哈，你们呢给给我们 Google 一些啊、呃、反馈。另外一个呢，就是跟我们工程师一起呢，能够一相啊、呃、能够互相切磋，啊、呃、来同时呢支持一个我们晚上这个论坛，啊、呃、支持咱们中国更更为广大的这个开发者。所以呢是这么一个计划呢，希望大家能够啊踊跃参加，然后呢也能够体验一下我们 Google 这个工程团队的一些啊、呃、比较有趣的事情。好，谢谢。下面 talk 的名字叫 My Maps， 就是我的地图。演讲的是 k i s s Gordon。嗯、呃、k i s s Gordon 是 Google 的资深软件工程师，他一些领导 Google 的我的地图团队。然后他是零五年加入 Google 的。大家知道，呃 k i s s 在加进加入 Google 之前呢，在什么地方工作过吗？觉得这个地方肯定大家都听说过很多次。就是美国太空总署，还有恩斯研究中心，他于华盛顿大学取得了计算机科学的博士学位。下面欢迎 Kiss 给大家来带来这套。Hello。Um, I couldn't uh, I couldn't tell anything he said, so I don't know if the introduction was true. <laughs> um, but I think by what he said is that I'm the technical lead of the uh, MyMaps team uh, um, in Google Maps. Um, now, uh, the uh, the MyMaps tab is a feature in Google Maps that exists in uh, maps.google.com and d2.google.com. Uh, it, it does not exist on .cn. Um, and it actually contains uh, it contains multiple uh, different elements. Uh, if you were at uh, Mesh's talk uh, uh, this morning, he talked about uh, you know maplets uh, as as one option for developing application maps API applications that live inside Google Maps. And maplets are one of the things that lives uh, in the My Maps tab. Uh, um, there, but there's also um, map creation tools uh, that, unlike maplets, uh, don't require uh, programming expertise on the part of users. Um, so, so really, this was originally designed as, as two different ways of allowing users to create content. So uh, developers can create content by um, writing these very rich uh, maplet applications. Uh, but that requires them to be able to write JavaScript. Uh, the advantage, of course, is that they can do something that's much more interactive. Um, the, uh, um, on the other hand, uh, the MyMaps editing tools allow a user to just draw on the map. And I guess I shouldn't be probably doing this on uh, Chinese, Chinese version of the map because I'm getting empty map tiles on my default location here, which is the United States. Um, but uh, but it's very easy for users to draw, you know, put down uh, place marks on particular locations. They can uh, um, edit the content in rich text. Uh, they can add videos, uh, uh, photos, um, and and this has turned out to be very powerful. I mean, the tools themselves aren't powerful; they're actually very basic. 
Um, but the power is in the fact that they are basic and so, so many people can access them and use them. Uh, um, this has been a very popular tool for um, news agencies who want to get up stories about events that are happening in particular locations. You know, the, the reporters don't know anything about running JavaScript code, but they can, uh, they can use a, a, a simple user interface like this. Um, the, uh, um, this has also been a, a very important tool for various disaster uh, um, and natural disaster events to help get information to, um, um, to citizens about sort of critical, uh, critical events. We've had um, a few of these uh, in China, actually. Uh, um, one was uh, during the uh, severe uh, sto sto snowstorms during the, the, the holidays. Um, the, this map was actually developed uh, at Google, but it could just as well have been developed um, outside of Google. Um, uh, this was a map, uh, a, a transportation map to help alert uh, um, people to what the weather conditions were and, and the, the impact on, on, on holiday uh, transportation. This is a, just a screenshot of uh, what the map looked like at the time. Uh, this is actually the, the map as it currently is, so you know it was updated as, as the weather improved. Um, we also... Uh, uh, there's also a map that was uh, developed in response to the uh, um, recent earthquakes uh, in China. And, uh, and this is something that I feel very good about, that, that you know, to be able to work on tools that can, can make a real difference and, uh, um, and, and help, uh, um, help people uh, respond to, um, to disasters. Um, but the problem with these tools is, um, as I said, they're, they're not really uh, designed for developers. They're just very simple user interface tools. If I had a map of, you know, that had, uh, say, lots of place marks, um, in this case, you know, I do have the, the right tiles for, for the United States. Uh, just, uh, this is a map of, of cities in the United States. Um, if I wanted, if I decided I didn't like the icon for the place marks, I'd have to go and, and you know, manually change each one. Sorry about this. Okay. Um, so, the, the situation where we have two different uh, tools, one for developers and one for end users, uh, doesn't make me very happy. Um, what we've, we found at Google, uh, with our experiences with the uh, Maps API, is that if we write an, an API uh, and make it available for, for all you developers to use, then you will develop much, um, many more applications uh, many more diverse applications, uh, better applications than Google possibly could, even if we uh, decided that all Google engineers should be spending uh, um, all of their time doing nothing but writing maps, API applications. Um, and I see no reason that shouldn't also be true for my maps. Um, so, uh, as a result of that, I'm committed to um, exposing uh, my maps entirely uh, in the Maps API. Um, now, so far we've, we've taken some initial steps uh, and there's more steps to go. I'll, I'll be discussing some of this. Um, but the uh, my Maps user interface uh, is just a very basic user interface that's designed to meet all possible uh, uses. But we know that there is no user interface that really meets all possible uses. You know, the, the ideal user interface for a bird watching map is going to be different from the ideal interface for a, a hiking trail map. And uh, by, by putting this in the API, then all of you can, you know, write whatever kind of specialized applications you, you think 
um, you, you want to work on. You know, or you can uh, decide that we didn't do a very good job on our user interface and you may want to improve it, add some features, uh, we want to enable that as well. So there are a number of ways you can uh, use MyMaps in your own site. Uh, not all of these necessarily involve programming, but I'm going to talk about, uh, talk about all of them anyway because um, you may not all be aware um, of what you can do. The simplest thing you can do is simply embed a map uh, in your own um, web page. Um, and this is something that news agencies have done a lot. They'll have a, a map of, of some news event and the map will be embedded in the page for the news story. Um, and there's a couple of ways you can do that, which I'll talk about. Um, the next thing, we very recently released uh, um, support for our user interface for editing uh, lines and shapes uh, in the Maps API. So now you can write your own uh, applications that allow users to edit, uh, um, you know, edit complex things on the map more easily without having to write all that on your own. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that in, in, in some detail. Um, and finally, uh, we are in the process of developing a storage API to allow uh, developers to write data directly to our servers. Um, so you can write your own API uh, site. It could use our user interface or it could use a user interface of your own. It doesn't have to be JavaScript code. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, you can uh, store data to our servers. Uh, users of the MyMaps tool will be able to access the data. Um, um, other API sites will be able to access the data. Um, it will all live in one place. Okay, so the simplest thing you can do is simply embed a map uh, in a web page. And here's, here's an example. Here's the code to do that. All we're doing is we're taking uh, the URL to identify the my map and we're putting in an iframe. And there's a few extra URL parameters, but you don't need to know how to generate those. You can just go to the uh, um, go to the my maps uh, page, uh, click on a link to this page, and just copy this uh, um, text down here to embed in the website. Uh, so that's very easy to do. Um, but not very interesting for developers. Something a little bit more interesting you could do uh, is do so directly in the, uh, in the Maps API. Um, so let me walk through the, what this code is doing. Um, um, it exploits two facts. One is that you can output the contents of a MyMap in an XML format, either in, in KML or in GeoRSS. You just specify output equals KML or output equals GeoRSS on the URL. Um, and the other is that you can overlay a, a, a KML or a GeoRSS file uh, um, using the, uh, the Maps API. So I'm going to run this code. Uh, so this is, uh, this is just loading the map I showed you earlier, um, but now it's, uh, um, it's doing so in the API. Now you may wonder, you know, why am I doing this? I, I've just d done the same thing I did on the previous slide, only with more code. Um, but to, to show you why that might be kind of interesting, let me just change this a little bit. I'm going to take this uh, thing, which is a local variable, and I'm going to convert it to a global variable. And I'm going to run the code again. Okay, so now I have this this uh, element uh, ggeoxml, but the geo the geoxml object it, it's a uh, it's it's a type of overlay on the map, and so I can uh, I can um, any um, any uh, methods that I can call in an overlay, I can call on this thing. So I could say geo uh, XML hide and run this code and it's hidden, right? And I could show uh, and then it's shown. And so I could have multiple overlays. I could have multiple maps, maybe uh, define a user interface that toggles them on and off. Uh, I could do other things like that.
Um, so, as I mentioned, we're also exposing the uh, editing capabilities uh, for editing uh, polylines and polygons in the in the API. Um, and so we, uh, you know, to kind of motivate this example, supposing I wanted you wanted to develop a um, an API site where users could annotate information about the Olympics. Uh, uh, well, the first thing you might want to do is allow them to uh, uh, draw uh, uh, draw shapes to indicate the locations of various Olympic events. Uh, so here I have simple code. Uh, we, we've extended the uh, the polygon and polyline objects in uh, in uh, the Maps API um, we, to to accept an additional method, which is called enable drawing. And so I just ran this code, uh, and so what, what I'm doing here is I'm I'm creating a polygon and putting it on the map, but it's an empty polygon; it has no points in it whatsoever. Um, and then I call enable drawing. Uh, and so what this does is it intercepts click events on the map, and I can just click on locations and draw my polygon. Uh, so far this isn't very interesting, right? I've, I've drawn a really boring shape here. It doesn't really actually match the, the sort of shape of this, this, this park. Um, but now it's not interactive, right? The, the, the act of drawing the polygon as soon as I close the shape, the act of drawing was over, and now, there, now there's no more interaction at all. I can't click on it or anything. Um, but I can, uh, I can improve that. So we've added uh, uh, two events, uh, enable editing and disable editing, uh, that allow users to edit the points in, in the polygon. Um, and note here that I'm, I'm using the gevent object. Um, actually, just by a show of hands, how many people here uh, um, have used the uh, Google Maps API? Um, how many people here uh, have programmed in JavaScript? Okay, all right, so that gives me a good idea of, of the audience. Um, so uh, if you were at Mesh's talk uh, this morning, he, he talked uh, to, to, at some length about the event model in, um, in the Maps API. Uh, and this simply allows uh, um, uh, you know, it, it allows various uh, um, components that don't actually directly, you know, um, talk to each other to sort of, um, uh, you know, communicate. So, uh, so if I have a polygon object, I can uh, indicate that. Um, whenever a particular event on that polygon object happens, that some code gets that it gets executed, um, and we've added two new events uh, for mouse interaction, mouse over and mouse out. Um, so all this is saying is that when a mouse over event happens, then we're going to enable editing on the polygon, and when the mouse out event happens, then we're going to disable editing. Um, so I haven't run the code yet, so let me do that. All right, so now. When I mouse over, you notice that these additional points appear. Um, I've got two kinds of points. I have, uh, I have the, the points that appear at the vertices um, of, the, of the shape. Um, and then I also have these points that appear in the middle that are kind of ghosted. And these allow me to add new points very easily. So I can just drag on one of these points. And you know, each time I do so, it adds another point to the polygon. And I can, uh, I can kind of make it match the shape better. Um, and, you know, this is all something, you know, you could, you know, spend, you know, several months trying to, you know, uh, duplicate this uh, functionality on your own using the Maps API, but why should you bother? So now it's, it's here, you can just call it directly. Um, so, but this isn't a very good color for a park. Uh, I'd like to actually change the style as well. Uh, so we added some uh, additional methods, uh, set stroke style and set line st and set fill style. Um, and these allow us to set the, um, you know, change any aspect of the, the style of a, of, of a polyline or polygon. So color here is simply, a, um, it's a HTML color string, it's a hex hexadecimal string. Um, opacity is a number from zero to one, indicating how, uh, um, how non-transparent it is. 
and uh, weight is how thick the line is. And the same thing for, for fill, you know, fill color and fill opacity. Um, so now if I run this code, um, uh, so, so this is responding to a click event, and all I'm doing is I'm setting all these things to random values. Um, so now every time I click on the uh, shape, I get a random, uh, you know, random color, random opacity, and, and all of that. And I just cycle through until I find a color I like. Okay. Um, but what if I decide I don't really like uh, all this detail that I just added? Um, I'd like to be able to get rid of it. Um, so we, we added a, a delete vertex uh, method as well. Um, so, uh, um, and, and this takes an index as argument. That's just the, the position of the, you have a sequence of points that represents the, the polygon. Um, and uh, this just indicates the, the position in that sequence of the thing I want to delete. And we're also passing an index value in as an optional uh, argument to the click listener. So if I happen to click on a vertex, uh, then this, uh, this value will be some number, right? So I'm, I'm doing this check to see whether the index is a number, um, and if so, I'll delete the vertex. So note when I run this code, uh, it deletes the vertices, but it's also changing the style because I still have the click listener that I added previously. Um, obviously, I could make those so that um, uh, so that they're exclusive, that they so they don't both fire at the same time. Uh, but just as a general rule, you can have as many listeners on an object as you want, uh, and all sorts of things could happen as a result. Um, so, in addition to leading a vertex, you might also want to know if you can program it programmatically insert a vertex, and in fact you can. Um, here, uh, this, is, this is the most complicated code example of my slide, and I apologize for the complexity, but I wanted to be a little bit more whimsical, uh, a little bit more fun in this example. Um, so, uh, the, only, the only part of this code that you actually need to understand is, uh, is the insert vertex method. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm going through, and I'm setting a timeout, I'm setting a timer, you can do this in JavaScript where every so, you know, so many milliseconds some code gets executed. And so what I'm uh, saying is that um, every you know, 100 milliseconds I'm going to add another point according to this algorithm that I've just defined here. Um, and so when I run this code, um, it starts adding points uh, to um, it creates polygons and it starts adding points to the map. Um, and note actually that th these might look like, actually, sorry, I said polygon. These aren't actually polygons, they're polylines. Uh, what I've done is I've just kind of created a polyline that just spirals in on these shapes. Uh, so. Um, so, in addition to uh, drawing a new polyline or a new polygon, you can also extend an existing uh, polyline. Uh, you can add new points to something that you, you created previously. Um, and that uses the same, uh, um, same method I just show, showed you previously, enable drawing. Um, so here, what I'm doing is, is first I'm creating a, an empty polyline object and, and adding it to the map. So that's the same thing I did previously with polygons. Um, and I'm, I'm binding some events. Um, and in particular, I'm, I'm adding this click listener. Um, so whenever I get a click on the polygon, again, I'm going to look at the index to see whether, uh, whether there was an index set for the click, whether it was on a point. Um, and if it happens to be the first point or the last point, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to call enable drawing. And I'm going to say, for the first point, that um, I'm going to set the optional from start argument to true. And for the last point, I'm going to set it to false. Um, so to see what this does, so first, um, I uh, created my empty polyline. So I'm adding clicks to the map, and I can double click to end it. So now I have a polyline. I added some listeners for the um, uh, mouse over mouse out. and But I also added these. Uh, extra click listener. So click on the first point, I can add new points. Click on the last point, I can add new points. 
I can keep doing this as often as I like until I get bored. Note if I click on a mid middle point, it doesn't have any effect. So you, know, you can define the user interface however you want. Um, we designed this to try to be very flexible. Um, now, there's a number of new events that we've added uh, that are worth knowing about. Uh, and so just to kind of illustrate some of these events, uh, let, me, uh, let me step through, run through this code. All I've done is I've, um, I'm adding a bunch of listeners. I'm adding listeners for all these, uh, these, these events here. And any time the uh, listener gets triggered, I'm simply going to print out the, uh, the name of the event. So I mouse over a point, I get a mouse over point event. I mouse out, I get a mouse out point event. The same thing happens for midpoints. Um, there's some additional arguments that let, let me know more precisely what's going on. Um, if I drag a point, I get a line updated event. Um, if I click on the point and continue line, when I finish it, I get an end line event. So, so why do you care about all this, right? Well, you don't want to, the user to just draw things on the map and then have it go away as soon as the user clicks reload. You want something to happen, right, as a result of the user's actions. Maybe you're going to save something to a server, right? Um, you know, maybe you're going to cause some other user interface that you define to be updated, right? But you want uh, some behavior. So this way you can spy on the user, you know what they're doing, and uh, as, soon as, uh, as soon as they've completed an action, you can take the appropriate steps, you can look at the polyline, see what points are in it, and send that information to a server. Um, so you, if you want to host your own data, um, as, as I'll discuss, we're also going to provide an option if you want us to host the data, but this way it's, it's totally up to you. There's two particular events I want to call special attention to, and that's end line and cancel line. Uh, so, uh, let me, uh, I'll illustrate this uh, example and then I'll, I'll show what it's actually doing in the code. So let me run this code. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start clicking on the map, did the same thing I did before, uh, added an empty polyline. Uh, and now when I double click, note that it updated this text here, right? So why did it do that? So it said five vertices. Um, well, if I go up here, I notice that there's a listener on the end line event, which got triggered when I double clicked. And uh, as a, in response to the event, I'm simply adding a, an extra HTML element to the page um, that just tells me how many vertices are in the line. So, and then once I do that, I call start poly, which is actually the function that I'm in, which starts the whole process all over. So now I can create another line. Okay, and now it, it says nine vertices. Um, you know, every once in a while the double click event gets caught by the map and it causes it to zoom in. Um, uh, so, so what happens if I try to add a point with, with one vertex? Um, well, let's try that. So I'll click here, right? If I move the mouse and click, right, then, then that's two vertices. So I'll click again on the point. Um, note that nothing happened. I didn't get something here that said zero vertices, right? And the reason is that the end line event never got triggered. What got triggered instead is the cancel line event, right? Because a, a line with no vertices, there's no way you could possibly interact with it. There's no way you could possibly see it. So we don't want to consider that a successful line creation event. So instead of triggering end line, we trigger cancel line. And note that I'm explicitly here removing the overlay. This is a caller's responsibility. You added the overlay, it's your responsibility to move it remove it, um, otherwise it's just there. Um, it won't really have any effect because the user won't be able to interact with it, but it's kind of nice to clean things up. So we call remove overlay, and then we call start poly all over again so we can keep on adding ones. Okay, so putting it all together, here's just a very simple little sort of mind maps implementation. Uh, it I just you know gives me the basic tools. I can add polylines, polygons. I can edit them. Uh, I can uh, I can change their color. I can delete vertices. Um, um, and you know how to do all of this, right? I showed you uh, how to do each one of these things. 
Um, so you can see that, you know, uh, I'm not showing you the code here, but if you step through this URL, uh, you can also find this on the Google, uh, the Maps API blog. Um, if you step through this URL, you can drill through it, you can find the code that actually does this. It's, it's, it's not really that much JavaScript, and most of it is actually, uh, is, is to do with this stuff here at the left. Um, the, the, the map interaction is very simple. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about the uh, editing API. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about a storage API that we're currently developing. Um, so, uh, so in the example that I just showed you, uh, you know, when I um, let me just go back to this example. Um, Note that I, I went back to the previous page and now it reset. I don't have any of that content anymore. None of it was getting stored anywhere. I was in fact responding to events, right? If I um, change this line, it tells me how long the line is, um, right? Uh, but it's not actually uh, saving it uh, um, to a server anywhere. You could do that on your own, but you know, if you like, you can use a, a an API that we're developing. This has not launched yet. Um, and in fact, I welcome anyone to give me your opinions about what you know, things are important to you to make sure that when we do launch it, we, uh, um, that it actually meets your needs. Because this is for you. Um, this is, this is to, to, to kind of complete the picture, right? We want, we want all of my maps to be in the API, right? And that includes the ability to store it. Um, so, uh, so the storage API is based on GData. Uh, GData is an Atom protocol. Um, I'm not going to describe it in any great detail, um, but if you're interested in, uh, in finding out about it, here's the URL for the uh, documentation. Um, but essentially, it's a, it's a feed. It's an Atom feed, which allows um, to both uh, fetching and also editing data. Um, and what we're doing is we're uh, um, Atom is just a transport mechanism. Uh, we're using KML to actually represent the, uh, the contents of the map. Uh, KML or GeoRSS. We, we, we'll also, maybe not in the initial implementation, but we will support GeoRSS. Um, KML is a better option if you don't have any particular reasons for using GeoRSS because it contains style information, uh, um, which, which uh, 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 KML contains style information, which GeoRSS does, does not. Uh, so, so one of the most one of the important things, if we're going to have uh, developer written applications store data to Google servers, is um, how to how to do authentication, right? And most existing GData, GData applications are built around the assumption that we're trying to provide a way for a developer to access a user's data. Right, so a user goes to a site, like you know, um, say something to add information to their calendar. Right, um, so a user goes to the site. Uh, um, we, we redirect uh, the, the the user's web browser to a Google login page, which generates an authorization token, which then gets sent back to the developer site, and then the developer can uh, uh, can authenticate uh, requests against that authentication to token. So we know that the user actually typed in their password. The, the developer never actually sees the password. Um, so, so this is nice, uh, and, and certainly the, I, I, I can see applications for that in the, in the Maps API. But I think that something maybe a little bit more compelling is, is actually turning it the other way around, which is giving users access to data that's controlled by the developer which is to say that you have an API site, maybe it's jogging trails, right? You don't want every user who comes to the site to see their own jogging trails, right? You want them to see jogging trails that everyone has created, right? You want to create a community site. Um, and so that means that you have one map, or maybe several maps, that are controlled by the site that, uh, that um, are, um, you know, that anyone can edit. But you only want them to be able to edit it through the site. Right, you don't want them to be able to go directly to maps.google.com and start deleting things. Right, you want to have some control over that. And so what we're doing is we're 
uh, is, this is very easy to do using a client login, which is a, um, an alternative uh, authentication scheme uh, to uh, AuthSub, which is what I was talking about previously. And the advantage there is that the developer site can just directly log in. You know, uh, you, you have the password, you know, the username and password. The user never has to see it. Okay. Um, here's a very simple uh, example of a, uh, a um, GData client application. This, this is written in Java. Uh, there are actually client libraries uh, um, for, for a number of different languages, uh, including uh, Java, Python, JavaScript, uh, uh, C++. Um, the, uh, and this is all the code. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you in a, in a moment what the code does. I, I wish I could show you an example. I actually have been having login problems trying to trying to get this example, so I can't actually show it, show it to you running. Um, but um, so what this what this example is doing is it's it's simply loading a map and it's changing all the icons in the map. Um, so uh, so the first thing we do is we uh, we we create a URL that that, that identifies the feed. The G data feed for a particular uh, map. So this is all the features in a particular uh, uh, my map. Um, and then we're uh, we're doing a login. Uh, this is the simplest possible login you could do. So logging into a a, a, my, a my map map service. Um, and then we're just getting the contents of the feed. So we're saying, give me all the features in this map, right? And this is a synchronous operation, right? As soon as this returns, I have all the features here uh, in this feed object. Um, and then I can just iterate over all the entries. I can uh, call feed.getEntries, iterate over each one. Um, and here what I'm doing is a little bit hacky. Uh, uh, I don't really recommend doing things this way, but just to show you by example, I'm treating all the KML in the feature as just a blob of text. And I'm doing a regular expression, uh, you know, search and replace on that text. Um, so I'm uh, uh, basically everywhere I have an icon in the uh, in the um, in the KML, I'm changing the uh, the URL for that icon to my new icon here. Um, and then I call update, um, giving it the uh, the entry that I want to update. Um, and again, it's a synchronous operation. So this is not the most efficient code possible. It's going each time it goes, it's going to wait for the previous update to finish, uh, which isn't really necessary for this. Um, but uh, when I'm done, then I've changed all the icons in the map. So the point about this is, you, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a, a um, uh, it doesn't have to be a web application even. It could be a client application. Um, th this is this is. Uh, for you to do what you want with. Um, okay, that's uh, that's all I have. Um, I, I welcome any questions. Storage API is specifically for storing into Google serv servers, but we'd like to define it in a general way that other developers could implement the same API, um, an identical API, um, on their own servers, um, just to make sure that things interoperate better. Um, I think that'd be a really great thing to do. Um, but you're not in any way constrained to how you store the data. You can, you can do what you want with it. Well, the second question is, uh, 
about the account problem, uh, the, the second attacker to, to uh, is, uh, use the account, uh, only one account. But there, if there are a lot of customers uh, in my website. I, so the, the problem is that I only have one account to Google, but uh, a lot of threads run in my own website. So is it possible to uh, is it possible to use it? Um, so uh, the, the question is: Is it possible to use it with multiple accounts? Is that uh, a, lot, a, a lot of customers is uh, uh, is on my, my own website, but I have only one account to your to Google. So there's a problem. Um, so I, I I don't understand what the the question is. Is is the question about having different users on your site have their own accounts? So Keith, I think the concern is that I think the problem is, uh, my understanding, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. So if, suppose I'm uh, a service provider, like I, I manage a jogging site. So I have my own users and they don't have Google Maps account. I have only one Google Maps account. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can do that, but um, what you would need to do is uh, you manage the uh, account authentication of the users. And you can have your own set of maps. You can you can allocate them however you want. You can uh, maybe say one map for each user or something like that. Um, and but you you would have to keep track of what that relationship is between the users and the maps. Um, and because the maps are all actually owned by you, the developers, um, you can define whatever kind of access policy you want with respect to the users. So so this is a problem solved by myself. I usually. Uh, I let those uh, customers uh, align, so one by one, solve the problem. Mm, uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand. So, uh, so, so I have, if I don't have only one account, so uh, I solve the problem myself. Uh, uh, yes, yes, so you, you can solve that problem yourself. If, if, if in general, um, the, so there are, there are other, um, authentication options that we might you know, explore in the future that might make it possible for us to, to do something like what you want, to, to, to provide support for it, um, or maybe even provide some code that you can run on your own uh, site. Um, but, um, at, you know, but at least as of when we launch, uh, um, if you want to do that, you'll have to manage the access yourself. But, but it's possible using the, the, the API. I have one question. Uh, I want to know how to debug in the program. Debug, debug. Do you, how to debug the program? Yes. Um, yeah. So, so, uh, um, so, is this a question about debugging Maps API applications in yes. general? I just see you the right code is all is online on the web page in the edit. Uh, I, I don't know whether if I do the program uh, something wrong, I have make a break point, I see the error message, uh, but I don't know this online edit, how to debug the program. Okay, um, so let me answer that at, at a few different levels. Uh, first of all, um, as, as Mesh discussed in his uh, talk uh, this morning, um, the, uh, the JavaScript code that we generate uh, is, is compressed, um, which means that it's, it's basically unreadable. Uh, 
which is a problem if there's, a, if there's an error, if there's a JavaScript error that gets generated inside our, inside our code. If that happens, maybe it's a bug in our code, maybe it's a bug in your code. Um, but you don't get very informative information about what that error is because the, the symbol names are all very short. Um, and that's a general problem. Um, 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 but more generally, um, you know, let me kind of just give general kind of JavaScript debugging uh, advice. There's a very nice uh, tool called Firebug, which is which I inadvertently uh, demoed uh, in one of my slides, uh, which allows you to, um, to the extent possible, debug uh, JavaScript applications. It allows you to see the stack trace. You can uh, you set breakpoints on particular conditions. Uh, you can uh, you can execute JavaScript code to change the state of variables and things like that. So it's a very powerful tool in general. So if there's a bug in your code, you can at least see where in your code the error happened and, uh, and then kind of play around with it interactively using Firebug. Um, so I, that's something I would recommend if you haven't uh, considered it. It, it only w works in, in the Firefox browser. Uh, there are other JavaScript debuggers that work in other browsers. So there's uh, uh, a couple of debuggers that work in Internet Explorer, for instance. Um, but, but I really like Firebug. Thank you. Hey. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure my understanding. And uh, the, my, my, maps, my map is uh, based on the uh, Maps API, right? So, uh, so uh, th that's a that's a kind of complicated question, actually. So the the, the API that we I showed you is is part of the Maps API, uh, yes. Yeah. So um, so if I um, I build a website and then I use the Maps APIs and uh, my maps and my customer accept uh, 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 my website. And, do some modification about the maps, right? Like the main the markets or the lines. So um, these kinds of um, custom uh, motivation information um, is stored is stored in um, the Google server or my server. Uh, yeah, it can be uh, the Google server or your server. Yeah, that depends on how you, you write the application. Um, so e e either option is possible. Uh, so um, there, is there something um, personal uh, information um, like um, the account and the passwords, uh, the username and the password is stored in my website, right? Um, so if you're storing it on Google servers, then you, you, you will not be storing, you will not, not ever see any uh, usernames or passwords. But if you want to store it on your own server, then of course you can do whatever you want. Because it's your data and it's your users. Thank you. Oh, um, everyone who's asked a question, I, I forgot that I have these nice little toys here. Um, Um, everyone who's asked a question, please come up and take a toy. Hey, hello. So I got some questions. So if so, I want to know the 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 the, 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 mark, the marker the support the picture and the video such like this. And uh, does the marker has the attribute of the tag, so we can categorize the markers with different the. Direction. Um, so, uh, so, so first of all, let, let me make sure that I, I, I don't, um, you know, create any kind of false impressions. So we can't, we can't actually support in the JavaScript API the video in the in the image of the marker itself, but we can in the info window in the in the bubble that opens up when you click on the marker. Um, you, you can do custom images for markers. You can say, I want the image of this marker to be, and you, you give it some URL. Like, um, the, like this the situation, just like uh, today I am having this, we are having this activity here, and I take some photo, and can I upload this photo through my mobile phone? 
and arcade with the GPS information just on the Oh, okay, I see. So, so you're interested in the general problem of you want to, you know, you want to add additional attributes, structured data to... Uh, the, the GPS, the, the, yeah. the, the location data and the photo, the picture, the video, and the markers should be categorized with different... I, I can... Yeah, yeah so you can, you, using the API, you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to change the, uh, um, uh, the icon, the location, uh, which corresponds to GPS coordinates. How about uh, the and, attributes? And, um, so we, uh, we, we do in fact support, uh, we will support uh, arbitrary attributes. Um, you, you can put anything you want in HTML. Okay. Well, not anything. We'll, we'll, we'll sanitize it to make sure it's not malicious. Um, to make sure it's not like a you know cross-site scripting attack, um, but uh, but subject to that, you can put whatever you want in HTML. In addition to that, we will provide support for uh, additional structured attribute data um, that you can do whatever you want with. Um, it won't actually show up in the user interface when someone clicks on something, um, unlike the HTML, right? Where, where you, you know, so so so. So there are a number of options for, for putting additional data associated with it. Second. Uh, I have a question about uh, the, mobile, the, the mobile platform here. Okay. Uh, uh, as we know, uh, we can create a lot of uh, Google, uh, our own maps uh, and store that Google. So I'm curious about the, uh, the the relationship with uh, the interaction between the maps and the mobile uh, platform, for example, the, the iPhone, the Android. So, so uh, what kind of, of the presentations? Uh, what what it could, could it looks like? Uh, maybe maybe uh, when I click, uh, when I go to my map and uh, the browser is closed and there is a local Google Map uh, application pop out and I can see my data, my own uh, defined map. So, 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 uh, so, so I want to know uh, how can I get my defined map on the mobile platform? Thanks, especially Android. Okay, um, so, uh, so I, I understood parts of that. I didn't, I, um, I didn't understand all of it, so, 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 let me know if I'm answering the wrong question. Um, so there is there is maps uh, support in Android. Um, the it, we do, it does not currently support everything that can be done in the maps application. Um, but in general, we consider mobile uh, to be uh, incredibly important. Uh, and you can expect that anything that that makes sense to uh, expose through. Uh, you know, Android or through you know, um, you know, Google Maps for mobile. Uh, you know, that that we will we'll do what we can to to, to support that. So maybe you can convert uh, my my code, for example, my own map code. I I can write those uh, code in JavaScript. Uh, maybe you can provide the tools to convert those code to the uh, Java code on Android platform, so I can uh, leverage my Existing map Okay, so I see. So the question is, are these APIs that I talked about today going to be a, a, available through Android? Is that is that the gist of the question? Uh, I just uh, want to know. Uh, 不好意思，我们时间马上就到了。就是说，如果有问题，可以，因为我们这个完了以后有一个 party， 你可以参加 party， 在私下跟 Ken 交流，好吗？